people volunteering their own time to look and investigate themselves. We've seen Facebook groups that have grown. So as the family continues to search, they have thousands and thousands of volunteers behind them, both here in person and online. So Riley Strait's dad just telling me that he is extremely appreciative of these people online and in person, trying to find out what happened to his son as it's been about a week and a half, but also asking for everybody to be respectful of law enforcement and the rest of the family. Riley Strain, 22 years old, went missing out of Nashville, Tennessee. This was the last place where he was actually seen on video surveillance. He was seen going up to a police officer. How you doing, sir? I'm good, how are you? Good. And he hasn't been seen since. There was a debit card found actually on the riverbank right here. Nashville authorities and volunteers planning to ramp up their search efforts this week with a particular focus near the Cumberland River, where officials say Riley was last seen, and the same area where two volunteers found Riley's bank card. We gotta find this kind of card. We gotta hang up. The first major break in days. I don't really know how we found it. it I would love to say yeah. just dumb luck, divine intervention. It was just sitting there. As a mystery deepens, the latest video released by Nashville police shows a 22-year-old college student the night he disappeared while visiting Music City with his fraternity brothers. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. Officials say Riley did not appear distressed in the brief exchange with the police officer. That occurred after Riley was escorted out of Luke Bryan's bar around 9.30 p.m. on March 8th. So right now we're just walking up the street, uh, Gay Street intersects right here. There's a turn in the road. There's multiple cameras in this area. You can see one with that police light right there. Um, that's one and then another, probably 15 feet down the street, there's another one. So those were the cameras that they actually checked, the footage of them actually going up to the police officer. So we're about to get the boat in the water at Shelby Park Boat Ramp. We're going to be going downstream to a couple of bridges and searching mainly brush piles to see what we can see on our sonar. This was our plan for what we were about to search that day. Our first stop was Shelby Park Boat Ramp. We decided to put the boat in here because we thought it would be a good place to get to our targeted location. Our planned search was to begin at Gay Street, right where the debit card was found, and continue downriver, searching along the banks and using our sonar equipment to see what we could find. Our plans were to search the sides of the river and also the pillars of the bridge in hopes of finding something that could be connected to this case. We also wanted to search downstream, past the railroad bridge, searching each bank with a keen eye to make sure we don't miss anything. We just began our search on the Cumberland River. I'm gonna turn my sonar on and see just about how deep it is. Right now it's about 14 feet. Looks like it's dropping, but you can see a whole lot of debris right there on the right. These are a bunch of sticks and logs and rocks and things like that. Uh, looks like we're going over a lot of it actually. Colson and I are now heading down the river and we're going to head to our first location of the day which is where the debit card was found. Uh, we are scanning on the way at this point, we had seen about three boats in the water, including one police boat. We plan on being here for two days of searching, and we're going to try to get as much water covered as we can. So if you're new here, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a sonar overview. We are scanning 70 feet to the right and 70 feet to the left. Uh, this is our down scan right here and you'll basically be able to see everything that's on the bottom of the river. Um, we're getting a pretty clear image today, and it looks really great. You can see the depth is 18 feet.
So you can see all the clothes and trash underneath this bridge, and this is not the exact location where they found that debit card, but this is just how it is on the riverbanks in Nashville. It's absolutely sad, and I really hope that something can be done about this and maybe a cleanup can happen. This is an abandoned building near the location where they found the debit card, and it has been searched by police. They didn't find anything inside, um, but they are currently searching a lot of this river, trying to see uh, what they can come across, if they can come across any clues related to his disappearance, um, or possibly, you know, they do have the dam closed today, so there could be a chance that, you know, it stops the running water and could, could show new signs of, of anything, you know, anything is possible in this, and we're trying our best to help, and the community is trying to help, and that's what it's truly all about, is getting answers, answers from this family. From this family. All right, so I'm looking on sonar. It's about 19 feet here. I'm getting a really clear image of the bottom. Um, haven't really seen much other than some debris. Uh, we're looking along the banks as well over here um, because there's chance that you know anything could have gotten caught up in brush or logs or anything like that. So we're gonna continue searching down this river and if we see anything on the sonar, I'll let you guys know. All right, you can see right down here, there's actually a bunch of tires uh, on the bottom of this river. Um, you can see them all right here at the bottom, and they keep on going on the side of this river. You can see them right here. Um, but right now, the depth is, uh, it's, it's not too deep. Um, right now, it's about 17 feet. We're right next to the riverfront park. So this may be a good area for us to search. And we're going to continue downstream um, and upstream through this area, kind of trying to scan it in a bunch of different directions. But um, you can see there's actually a police boat over there. So far, we've seen about three police boats and then about four people in different boats uh, searching with sonar down the river. So it's a really good community effort. People are really coming around and, and trying to see what they can do to help this family. And you can see the boat here. Uh, they've got a van on shore. Uh, they're actually discussing what their plans are next. And we're going to go downstream and see if we can find anything else. So you can see right here there's a brush pile. There's actually a lot of trees and sticks. You can see sticking up um, out of the water. I'm pretty sure we're going to see a lot of debris. Um, probably rocks. You can see on the side of the bank there's some apartment complexes, and uh, I think there's going to be a lot of debris over here. Looks like there's going to be a lot of sticks and rocks. So, I see something on my right. Looks like... Looks like I'm going to have to turn on that and go the opposite direction. A lot of logs, I can see. A lot of sticks trees and debris which we're you know we're looking for debris piles so we're just gonna have to go over this a bunch of times a group of people that were on a boat searching for Riley came up to us and asked us if we'd seen anything they told us that a lot of police boats were rushing down river I showed them a couple of sonar images and uh, they showed me a couple of theirs as well and uh, it was really like I said a community effort everybody came together and um, it was a great thing. After searching the riverbanks to see what we could find, we didn't really come across anything, so it was time for us to leave at around sunset. We wanted to make sure we made it back to the boat ramp safely and efficiently. The next morning I woke up really early to a phone call uh, from campus security. Uh, we were currently parked on the road near Belmont University and my car actually got broken into. Luckily they didn't take anything other than my cameraman's keys to his car but at least the window and the keys are replaceable and this is something that I just wanted to add and tell you guys about but it's not really important to the story. 
About 10 minutes later, we received a call about Riley actually being found in the Cumberland River, about eight miles west of his last known location. We have a uh, unfortunate update for you on the Riley Strange search. Chief John Drake, Metropolitan Nashville Police Department, will be speaking with you. Chief Drake. Thank you, Don. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning around 7.28 a.m., we received a call uh, from a worker on uh, 61st Avenue uh, at a company that adjourns the uh, Cumberland River that had been searching for uh, anything that would uh, pop up on the river, um, especially looking for a Riley strain if he would uh, surface here. As they were removing uh, an object from the river, uh, they saw, they noticed uh, what appeared to be Riley Strain um, pop up. Uh, the fire department uh, was called in, um, retrieved the body from the river. Uh, the medical examiner's office uh, reviewed the body and we've confirmed uh, that it is uh, Riley Strain. Uh, the family uh, has been contacted. Uh, there, if there are no signs of foul play at this time, according to the examination here at the uh, riverbank. Uh, Mr. Strain still had the shirt on that he was wearing, uh, so had the watch and other identifying factors that helped us identify who he is. I want to say uh, to the family, uh, my heart and prayers go out to you all uh, for this very unfortunate and tragic uh, incident. I also want to say thank you to the Nashville community and the Outpoint community of the Outpoint support from the community uh, in trying to help us locate uh, Mr. Strain. I also want to say thank you to our USAR team and, and to the fire department and OEM and TWRA and everyone else, and including the media, for everything that you've done, for the countless tips that came in. Uh, we received nearly 200 tips as of yesterday that we were vetting out. Um, so at this time, the family's been notified. Uh, there would be an autopsy uh, more than likely sometime today, and, uh, and we'll have a little bit further uh, from that point. I want to start by uh, expressing our police department's very deep sorrow over the finding of Riley today. And we are with his parents. I think they know that and we'll continue to be with them in the days and weeks ahead in our thoughts and prayers. I want to start this afternoon by introducing Riley's father, Ryan Gilbert. Uh, thank you all for being here and those of you that help us keep Riley's face in front of the cameras. Um, you've helped us get some closure here and let us take our boy home. Um, I got a lot of people to thank and I'm sure I'll forget somebody. Uh, you won't be forgotten. I'll, I'll remember you. The whole family will remember you. But uh, I want to first thank the uh, NMPD for their efforts. They've had a lot of sleepless nights on this case as well. Uh, can't give them enough thanks. Uh, really appreciate the work they've done. The United Cajun Navy has come in to assist them. Uh, they've, they've done a lot, of, a lot of work on the water and land for us. Uh, came in and gave structure to this investigation on our side of it and helped keep things lined out. Uh, Dave Flagg here with the United Cajun Navy. They've been a great, asso great asset to us. The individuals in the area that have come in contact with us that have helped us uh, with numerous things, gathering supplies and uh, taking care of stuff like that, putting up flyers and whatnot. The Ward family, for all their work, uh, they put up a ton of flyers around town. They've been making phone calls. They've been assisting us in any way they can. All the people that have donated items to them that they've got to us throughout this whole ordeal. All the people back home in our own personal lives that have been there to support us and our family at home as well. Uh, thank you for keeping us in your thoughts and prayers. We can't say enough to all of you. Thank you. Most of you are familiar with seeing my face by now. I'm sure we're all ready for it to be over with. It's been an emotional roller coaster. We're quite thankful for everything that you've done for our family. The grace that you've given us, it means a lot, more than you'll ever know. We have learned 
through this ordeal that everybody has brought all the good to us. We've had a little bad. You're going to have that. But it has given us faith in people that sometimes gets clouded by what we're constantly hearing. We're extremely thankful for all the volunteers that have shown up, given us their time, their effort, their energy, very little sleep they've gone on. Our family, we can't thank our family enough for all the support that they've provided us, for all the, you know, time spent, the love, the energy. Our friends that we consider family that aren't able to be here, but have been at home, caring to everything that we can't take care of, thank you. To the people of Nashville, I can't thank you enough for the support, the love, the encouragement that you've shown myself and my wife and Ryan and Millie. You don't understand how much that meant to us in some of our darkest hours. The hugs, prayers, the offers, I can't say it enough, thank you. To the Nashville Police Department, we know this hasn't been easy. We've tried to handle it with as much grace and poise as we can. It's hard. It's never quick enough when it's your, your family member. Like I told everybody numerous times, if he was two blocks away from us and they were walking him to us, it wasn't quick enough. We want him two inches in front of us. So thank you for everything that you've done for us. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. I'm not going to take a lot of time. Most of what I would say would just to be to echo what's already been said. Outside of that, I would like to extend my thanks to the media community here and uh, the national media community who far and uh, by large has been very gracious and very respectful, respectful of the situation. Um, it's something that has not frequently been encountered in these situations in my experience. I want to express my condolences to Riley's family and friends. I'm glad that the community was able to come together to find Riley in the end and ultimately bring answers for this family. Thank you so much for keeping the movement alive and for supporting what we do.